Welcome once again to my little corner on the deck here on this nice cold January day. Uh, this is part three uh, on a series on how to be how to uh, obtain your uh, amateur radio license. Uh, I was uh, supposed to meet individually with the president of the Faulkner County, Arkansas uh, Amateur Radio Club. Uh, it just didn't happen. Uh, things kept getting in the way. So I had to resort to Plan B, and here it is. Okay, folks, this, today is the 8th of uh, January, 2010, and due to uh, schedule conflicts, I wasn't really able to get together with the uh, Faulkner County Amateur Radio Club president. Uh, his schedule conflicted with mine, mine conflicted with his. It was really tight for the both of us. So what I did is I came down to the to the uh, Smitty's Barbecue again on Friday, which is today, and I managed to get both the... Uh, club president, who is uh, Frankie Parks, uh, and I also got uh, Glenn King, who is the volunteer examiner, uh, together, and I'm going to ask them both a few questions about getting the rest of my ducks in order to take my test for uh, technician level amateur radio license. And uh, Frankie, uh, I appreciate you being here. First of all, I appreciate you taking the time to, you know, to, to even to even come in this. And we're we're in the uh, in a in an empty meeting room that Smitty was kind enough to prevent uh, to, to provide for us. And uh, how uh, how long have you been president of the uh, uh, Faulkner County Amateur Radio Club? Uh, this will be my third year as president of the club. And and you're elected every year. Is this a yearly thing? Uh, yep. Every right. every December we reelect officers. And, and, and and how long have you? Uh, are you from the Conway area originally? Uh, yeah, I actually grew up just uh, about thirty minutes to the west of Conway out oh, here. So cool. the, I'm I'm a local boy. Okay. And how did you get involved in, in ham radio? How long have you been a ham? Uh, been a ham since 1993. Uh, a friend of mine in college actually introduced me into ham radio and uh, kind of elbowed me in, helped me get my first uh, my first technician license, and then. It's just been there. So, so he was your Elmer, right? Uh, yeah, sort he, of your Elmer. Sort of an Elmer, sort of just a really good yeah. friend that did the hobby. So I wanted to get into it. Okay. Well, t uh, why don't, why don't uh, I'll tell you? Let's go over here to Glenn for him. Glenn, what's an Elmer? Uh, tell these young folks out here that are 12, 13, 14 years old. What's an Elmer, and and w is it important to these young folks? It's absolutely important. Uh, the Elmer is the person that takes you from somebody that just has a ham license. To somebody that is a ham, it takes a little bit to learn. There's lots of there's lots of jargon that's used in the ham community that that someone that's just newly licensed doesn't know that much about uh, about antennas, about where to put an antenna on a vehicle if you're going to do that, whether you need to buy a handheld or a mobile unit, uh, what do I look for if I want a, something to go in the house, a base station. These sort of things, and that's what an Elmer is for, is, so, to, is to help you through those those things and, and help you decide on what kind of radio, what brand, what uh, what size, how much power, these sort of things. So an Elmer, he's sort of your mentor. He's, he's, your, he's, he's your teacher. He's your he, guide. He's the mentor. He's the one that transitions you from knowing basically nothing, like there used to be a, what was called a novice class. It takes you from being a novice to someone that, uh, that that knows the way around. And pretty soon, you can start passing this knowledge on to someone else, and you can become someone else's Elmer. Uh, what class of a license do you have to hold to be an Elmer? I mean, obviously, you'd have to have, be someone who's knowledgeable. I mean, but you wouldn't want, like, a technician class, a new guy to be doing this. You want, like, an old hand like yourself, right? Well, there's some old hams in our technician classes yeah. that, that never never desired to to uh, to be a general class or an extra class uh, licensee. Have you ever done an Elmer's uh, job? Have you ever been an Elmer? Oh, yes. How about you, Frank? you ever been an Elmer? Uh, yeah, actually, I've helped a couple of people get into the hobby and helped, uh, helped them along the way. Now, you know, I'm... I actually consider Glenn to be an Elmer to me because I come to him for questions when I don't know the answer. A lot of times he'll help me with something that I'm struggling with. So, so actually everybody's an Elmer in a club, yes. aren't they? Everybody Elmer's everybody else. Well, there that, you go, that's young what's, folks. That's what's great about a club. Yeah. That's why. That's the other reason a someone new to the hobby should seek out a club. Mm -hmm. That And that's where you'll find your Elmer. That's where you'll find somebody that, that shares your interest, that... Uh, can help you uh, transition from 
You may not even know what you're interested in when you get into amateur radio, but you may be interested in an HF using the higher frequencies where you can talk all over the world. Uh, you may be interested in contesting. You may be more interested in just uh, what's called rag chewing. So these are, these are the kinds of things that... Uh, rag chewing, that's just, that's just having a conversation yeah, with anybody just, that you happen to contact on your radio, right? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm more interested in the DX side of the house. You know, I want to sort of point my antenna eastward toward Europe and see if I can pick up anybody. And you said you're a DXer also, yes. right? You, you, I you love go collecting you, QSL cards. You, so you're a QSL card collector. That's uh, what Q, I do. Yeah, for those that don't know, a QSL card is a card that uh, someone sends another person. Uh, they're self-designed. Some of them are pretty fancy. Some of them have photographs on them. You can look them up on the internet. QSL card. It's just basically a greeting card that said, hey, it was great talking to you, and I live in South America, and my name is Bill, and this is my call sign, and whatever else he wants to put on that card, right? It's, it is, and it's an absolute confirmation that you made contact. Oh, that's cool. Do you collect QSL cards, too? Do you, do you ever get any of those? Yeah, I've got a few of them. I, I haven't been a really big DXer. I'm yeah. more of a... I actually stay closer to the VHF, UHF side, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. local type yeah. stuff, but yeah. I've I've done a little of it. Well, I want those boys overseas. Well, look, this is the, I bought this book. Let me show you what it is. It's called yeah. the uh, Ham Radio License Manual. It's put out by the Amer uh, the ARRL, which is the American Radio Relay League. Is that what that is? That's what Okay, it is. and I bought this thing. Uh, they wanted twenty five dollars for it on the internet, but I was able to get it through Walmart for seventeen dollars delivered to the store. So I saved a few bucks for anybody that's interested. And uh, this thing here says right here it says it's good through July first, two o six, two thousand six. No, no, it be, no. I'm sorry, it's for use beginning July first, two thousand six, but it doesn't say how when it craps out. Like, apparently, it's July of this year. What happens uh, uh, in the middle of this year concerning this book and? And the, and the test questions and things like that. It's already started uh, com uh, getting another question pool, uh, taking out questions that maybe doesn't uh, are not all that relevant anymore, are rewording some questions, uh, things like that. But it, that's what they will be doing between now and, and uh, June 30th uh, when the uh, question pool ends. So on June 30th, they'll be putting out a brand new one of these books, won't they? So, But actually, this one here really won't be out of date. It'll just be, I mean, I could still study this book and still pass the test, right? You could. You could study the book for the relevant information in the book. The the questions that are on the test, the they may change. I don't know how much they'll change. We never know how much they'll change. But there will be a change in the question pool. So the, the part that's in the book that pertains to the question pool may change. How many questions are on the test, Frankie, for, for a technician uh, class? For, that'll be 35 questions for the technician. Uh -huh. Gen the general class license is also a 35-question test. And then once you go to for your amateur extra, it's a 50-question. Okay, well, right now we're just talking about technician and right. possibly <laughs> general, which would be a total of 70 questions, two tests at 35 apiece, right? Can I, can I take a calculator in there? Yes. I, that, that's allowed, right? Because yeah, some of these uh, things deal with wavelengths and, and, and meters. Uh, and the main thing is, is a non-programmable calculator. Yeah, non-programmable. Or we have to verify that the programmer, the programming memory is clean. Okay. Do I? So, what about identification? You said you would check my ID the last time I filmed you. What does that mean? You have to have a picture ID. One, two, three, or one? Just one. Just one. Just one. As long as it's a government-issued... Picture ID. And how much does that cost to take this test? $15. $15. Is that a one time? Now, suppose I take the general test while I'm there. Do I have to pay an additional 15 If you pass the technician test, you can take the, the uh, general class test. It doesn't cost anything additional. The, at that same time. At but but same if time. I go at, at another time, it costs me an additional 15 yes. Okay, good. I think that's about it. And I guess I'll be seeing you, young man, sometime uh, around April, the middle of April. You just tell me when you want to do it. <laughs> I'll be there to give you your test, too. So. Oh, you got, you're part of it, too? I'm part of the VET. What? Oh, my God. What a, what a couple. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Well, that wraps it up for this session, uh, video number three in this series. All I have left to do now is uh, study my uh, ham radio license manual and take my test in the next couple of months. Until then, from the corner of the deck, this is John.